Now, thousands of devotees from the Shembe Church have embarked on their three-day annual pilgrimage to the Holy Mountain this week. The month-long pilgrimage, which attracts thousands of Shembe devotees, began on Monday. The Ebucheni faction of the church is headed to the Holy Mountain of Kenana, north of Durban. Every year, the Shembe congregants track barefoot for more than 90 kilometers from Inanda in e Matabatulu, north of Durban, to Mount Kenana. Now, Newsroom Africa's Nobuhle Mudisa joins us there from Ndwe Dwe. Nobuhle, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Now, there are four factions or four groups of participants that will be taking on this pilgrimage. Tell us about the journey of the Ebucheni faction. Indeed, Katlecho, there are factions within the church, and where we are, um, we are with the Ebucheni faction, which is headed to Ekenana, and they came from Inanda in Durban, and are now here in Tlagagazi, which is the main mountain um, where the first leader of the Shembe Church, Isaiah Shembe, in 1911, uh, started this pilgrimage, and he was said to have uh, been told by God that he needs to go on this pilgrimage, and that's how um, it started. So basically... Uh, if we speak about uh, the factions within the church, what had happened was in 2011 when Vimbeni Shamba, the former leader of the church, um, passed on, two leaders were then announced. Uh, one was his son, uh, Vela Shembe, and the other, uh, his, his cousin Vela Shembe, rather, and the other uh, was Mduduzi Shembe, who is Inyazi Lwezulu, who is uh, the leader of the Ebucheni faction that, where we are right now. And when he died, uh, you know, there was contestation as to who is the rightful heir uh, to lead the church. Uh, they then took their battle to the Guazulu Natal High Court where the court ruled in favor of Vela Shembe. And unfortunately, Vela passed away about uh, a year later, leaving uh, his brother Pinda uh, Shembe as the leader of the Tembizi Interfaction. And then we have Mtutuzi Shembe, who is the leader of the Ebucheni faction. And uh, even though the court did rule in favor of, uh, of Vela Shembe, uh, the Ebucheni faction still state the way it was and we do know that this is one of the biggest churches uh, in the southern hemisphere with about 5 million uh, followers and many of, of, of the people that are here are coming uh, from all walks of life uh, within uh, South Africa so you, are, you do know uh, that you, obviously uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, t uh, traffic here, you know we couldn't get in here actually earlier when we were trying to cross to the studio, um, we had a few problems uh, just, just getting out, we tried to get up on top of the Ntlagagazi Mountain, which is where the Tembizi Interfection uh, still holds uh, their prayers. They stay there for about the, uh, a month. And then uh, the Ebucheni Faction then moves um, to Ekenana. But they are here at Ntlagagazi right now, but they will be moving uh, to Ekenana. Why the, we, you're seeing tents around me uh, and people and cars is, is because they've rested. Uh, you know, they started this pilgrimage on Monday at around 1 a.m. and they've rested now. And they will find out from their leader, Unyazwezulu, which is Umtudu when they can then continue with their journey to Ekenana. So this faction of the church is headed to Ekenana and then uh, the Tembi's interfaction will be here at the Ntlagagazi mountain. All right, Nobuhle Murisa, thank you for that. We will keep with you as you track the journey of the Ebucheni faction that will be taking that pilgrimage. Now, to tell us more about the significance of this pilgrimage, we speak to Professor Mosa Kulu, the founder of the Indonza Yesizwe, which is a think tank. Thank you so much for joining us, um, Reverend, this morning. Now, traditionally, all devotees of the church would observe this pilgrimage together now, but now the infighting, as Nobuhle has just explained to us after the death of Vimbeni Tingolengosa Zanishembe, just talk to us about these factions, but most importantly, the significance of this pilgrimage. Well, thank you very much, my sister and your viewers. Um, as always, Happy New Year 2023, Year of Everything. Um, they always start the year with these pilgrimages. You, you must remember that the Shembe kind of uh, theology doctrine is a, a combination of the Zulu traditional religious system, aspects of Christianity, as well as Judaic uh, um, uh, um, uh, religious system, which is found mainly in the in the First Testament of the of the of the Christian Bible. So they're not purely a Christian church. They combine these, and so the pilgrimage would be 
based on both on all of, all these three aspects, in the sense that the belief system says that the spirits that um, are controlling um, uh, and, and giving blessings to people are actually Oh, well, it seems as though we are losing Reverend Musa Kulu there, who is the founder of Itonza Yesizwe, which is a think tank. And he was telling us there about the origins of the Shemba Church, not only being a church that focuses on Christianity, but Judaic as well as Zulu customs. It seems as though we've got the Reverend back on the line. Reverend, are you still with us? Yes, I'm here. All right. Yes, you may continue, Reverend. Yes, I, I, I was saying that. So you will have those three aspects. The, the 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 old Christian, Old Testament of the Christian Bible is full of pilgrimages to the mountains. I lift up my eyes. Whence shall my help come from? My help come from comes from the mountains. That is the Christian aspect. This, the the Judaic aspect. The the Zulu aspect is. Oh. All right, it does seem there that we've got a problem with that line with Reverend. Reverend, are you back with us? I'm with you, yes. Yes, yes. Kindly continue, please. The, yeah, the, 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 the Zulu aspect, uh, simply that the spirits that control the spirits of Zulu kings and their ancestors are in the mm. mountains. So when they, they climb up the, to the mountains, they are going there to reconnect with the spirit of the Zulu kings. You must remember that his majesty, our king, is also a member of this church, which is by far the largest church in the Zulu kingdom. And um, um, and so majority of uh, uh, adult Zulus are members of this church. So when they go there, it's a reconnection with the spirits uh, of Amakosi, the, the dead spirits of uh, Zulu kings, and so on, so that ultimately when the year starts, um, the spirits have blessed the Zulu kingdom and the people and the church, and then the pastors of the Shemba church can then go around with these blessings, blessing people. That is the theology that they have. And then, of course, the factions now, I go to the factions, I think there are five um, of them, because there's one of the factions which is not led by a member of the Shemba family. But uh, it started in 1976 with the death of uh, Prophet uh, Galile, who was the son of the original founder. So one of his brothers broke away and started the Ebu um, um, um camp. And then, and then, of course, his son, Londa, was left there at uh, the original Ebu Pagamen. Ebu Pagamen itself is a place of upliftment. So you can see the centrality of going to the mountain to the theology of the Shemba Church. And then, of course, um, late, so the prophet that broke away then started this Ebu Sheni line. And then there was now the Temple Zintle, which is on the south coast, at Pagamene, um, there is Kinye Zinye, and then there is Ebu Sheni. So there are four which are led by members of the Shemba family. And there's a fifth one which is led by Prophet Reverend Banza a former magistrate, which is also somewhere near Durban. The factions are, are not as a result of differences in terms of doctrine and theology. I think it's more about leadership styles and all those things. And the fact that it, was a, it is a family church could complicate things when it comes to issues of the family and in what is, we all know was a polygamous uh, situation. Now, the polygamous situation <coughs> is accepted there because, as I said, they combine Zulu traditional uh, belief systems with Judaic as well as uh, the, the Christian faith. And then, of course, um, also what is more important about the pilgrimages is that it is a, 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 a time of the year for families to unite and to break away from the day-to-day um, life and go to the mountain to receive the blessings. The Shemba Church is very much also family based. Usually, when a father joins uh, the Shemba Church, everyone becomes a member of that church. 
And that's wonderful to see because the Shemba Church has also called on men to fight the scourge of GBV. Just take us through what the thinking and the contributions that the Shemba Church believes that the men within that church can contribute towards society in relation to GBV. Well, any form of violence is discouraged um, um, at, at the Shemba Church. Any form of violence. So with the kind of power that they have, you must also remember that His Majesty, our King, who is a member of this church, is very strong on the issue of fighting against GPV. So it's a powerful church with many men, many, many men, and the influence that they can have if they can open up their voices against GPV openly, um, like making real their voices heard, is immense, not only for the Zulu Kingdom, but also for all people in South Africa, because you must remember that this is the second largest church um, um, after the ZCC. So you, 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 you can see the potential there, but provided that they take the heat from the leader and implement it at home level, at homestead level, at family level, at community level. Mm. Speaking there about the church being so large and it being the second largest in the country, um, there's been reports that three KZN municipalities have contributed close to 8 million rands towards this pilgrimage. Can you talk us maybe through some of the costs that are experienced with regards to bringing together so many people and having them there for such a long time um, in, with regards to that pilgrimage? Yes, no, it's, it's usually around um, um, catering. Because you can, you can imagine people staying there for 10 days and they run out of supplies and all of those. I think the Deben municipality, Etengwini, and the Ndwetwe municipality have done well to support this cause. Because we must remember that this cause is very good also for social cohesion and for promoting peace. Especially in a province which has had lots of violence in the past. And therefore, when this church, which combines mainly um, tra Zulu traditionalists, should I say, um, um, when a municipality comes in to help, it's very important that they do so in spirit of promoting social cohesion. The promotion of so social cohesion is central to how our government thinks about community building and the building of households. So that is commendable. Uh, the cost would be also to help um, the, the senior leaders and pastors uh, with uh, accommodation, which is usually intense and so on. So that, that would be more or less where the cost would go to. All right. Thank you so much for your contributions this morning. That's Reverend Professor Mosa Kulu, the founder of Intonsa Yesizwe, which is a think tank.